Realms, and today we're going to do something a little different. Um, a fan of Rolling Realms, Ben, asked on Boarding Geek if I would play a round with some fan-created realms, and so that's what I'm doing today. Uh, I'm going to try to point the camera a little bit lower so I don't have to crouch quite so much. Let's see if I can point that out just a little bit more. That should be a little better. Um, so today, we're going to play with three realms that fans created. This is just a printout, um, and just to be clear, uh, these aren't Stolmeyer official Stolmeyer Games realms. These are just realms that fans have created and uh, Ben selected them for me to play. So we're going to play Lost Ruins of Arnak, um, Lost Cities, and Orleans. And I need to actually, I don't know these realms all that well, so I'm going to have to look uh, at my piece of paper here. Actually, no, let me bring it up on my screen so I don't have to, so I can hold this up while I'm talking to you. Um, let's pull that up. Oh, no, that won't work. I'm looking at my, another, another tab on my screen here where can i pull this up i think i can do it here yeah let's do that prototype okay i'll pull up on my other screen over here so i can talk through these while also holding them up for you okay so here hold that up right there while i talk so for Lost Ruins of Arnak, we're kind of going to move up this temple track. Um, you're going to spend a number and sometimes a resource to move your magnifying glass or your book up by one box. You'll cross off and gain any resource in that box and then gain the resource or the reward listed to the right. The, um, the book cannot move higher than the magnifying glass, similar to the actual game Lost Ruins of Arnak. And you'll score some stars along the way. That makes sense. Works for me. In Lost Cities, I'm going to pay a resource for starting an expedi expedition, and once you've started it, you'll fill, fill cards from top to bottom. So I'll be writing numbers from top to bottom there. The value of each card must be higher than the one it's covering. Gain benefits on filled cards. This is created by Carol Tatika, and uh, the first round was designed by Matt Scora. So I'm not holding it up very well there. Um, I'll gain a star for every third and fourth filled car in an expedition. Okay, so those, and those are noted on the cards. That's great. I love when the, when the stars are incorporated into the art itself instead of just as a reminder below. I do have some realms that I designed that have that noted below, but I, I like it when it's in the art. Last, we have Orleans. Circle a worker and gain the resource. Okay, circle the worker and gain the resource. So they're like Orleans style workers. If you circle a, uh, I forget the name of that type of worker, but a certain type of worker, you may also circle a farmer, I believe is that other one, uh, without gaining a resource. Then look at the other die to see what event occurs once. So I think we're looking at kind of columns here. That's how I've determined it. This realm was designed by Daniel Risa, um, and we're looking at columns. So like this is the one column. And so if, I, if that's the other rolled die, I'll look down here and there's an event down there, a negative thing, some stuff I, actually there's some good stuff, some bad stuff, that's interesting. Um, and then uh, I'll score one or two stars per completely filled area. See how there are these areas here? You're trying to fill them up by circling all the workers among them. So let's take this first spin, and I'll probably maybe evaluate them a little bit along the way, uh, but it's just a first play, so we'll see. So roll number one, we have a four and a three. No dry erase when playing fan realms here, so we have to get it right the first time. So four and a three. So it looks like in Orleans, the, uh, the, there's some bad events here, number two, three, four. So those are the dice that I don't want to remain if possible. Um, the one thing I'm trying to figure out here with Orleans is if you need to mark off a, a worker in the same column as the number. And I think that is the case based on the structure here. So circle a worker like in this column in, in, in the numerical column and gain a resource. So I probably don't want to use that this round, basically. But over here in Lost Cities, if I can at least get one of these resources, I could start an exp expedition. Also, Lost Cities, I'm not sure it's entirely clear. It says pay a resource cost for starting an exp expedition. But it sounds like you don't necessarily need to use a number to do that. Just pay the cost. That's a little different. So over here, let's probably take the easiest route. Um, the arrowhead is a, a four or five, and I do have a four. So I have a four, so that means I can move up here, I could circle the hourglass, um, and I gain 
a coin, it looks like. Oh, I want to make sure I'm doing that right. Let's see. Cross off and gain any resource in the box. So I'll, I'll cross off the coin. So I gain a coin. And then I look over here and I use the magnifying glass to, to oh, okay, I see. Use the magnifying, magnifying glass to get there so I get a heart. And so now I have a resource that I could spend to start one of these in Lost Cities. And I'm trying to fill card. The value of each card must be higher than the one it's covering. So I want to use a lower, well, I only have a three to use there. But uh, three, four, five, six, yeah, okay. So I need to start boxes with ones, twos, or threes. So let's put a three. Sorry, my printout is a little bit faded here. But yeah, that, that's a coin right here. This is a coin. Let's go up to the coin column first, I think. So I'll spend a coin. So I've started an expedition, and I'll write a three here. Okay. We're learning. We're getting there. All right, turn two. A three and a six. So... There's a big bonus. There's a big event in this column in Orleans if I don't use the six. So I'm kind of tempted to use a three in this column. And there is a bonus that I get right here. So I can get a bunch of pumpkins this turn if, uh, if I do this correctly. Yeah, so let's circle. Oh, I see. I see what he's done. Yeah, this is clever. So there's a rule here that's saying that if you circle the, I forget the name of this worker again, I'll call it the gray worker. If you circle a gray worker, you can also circle a farmer. So ideally you wouldn't use your turn to circle a farmer, but there are resources on the farmers. So I'll fall into that trap a little bit, or I'll avoid the trap. I'll circle this worker instead. Um, I won't get any benefit. And then I look at the other roll die to see that the event is two pumpkins. And so I'll gain two pumpkins for that event. That's pretty clever. I like that. And then, um, again, I want to point this a little bit lower because I feel like I'm completely off camera here. Uh, <laughs> there. And so I now have the six to use someplace else because I just noted it as part of the event here. I could use the six. Mm, six isn't really great in Lost Ruins of Arnak right now. Oh, uh, six is really terrible in Lost City, so maybe I need to use it in Lost Ruins of Arnak. But the six is only good for a ruby in Lost Ruins of Arnak. And I'm not in a position to move using a ruby, so I almost can't use it there. So, well, let's use it in the Lost Cities. I can use a, uh, let's use a heart to start that expedition. Actually, no, I could just use it here, but that would end that expedition. It would come to a stop right away. But it's better than putting it there. So I will start that expedition, but let's put the six right here, and I'll gain a coin. Yeah, so that's a little rough. So there's no way to kind of restart that expedition. That just closes it out. And that was that's a little tight in Arnak because I it, it's not allowing me, based on the roll of die, I just, I can't, uh, there's only one way to use it here. And I, I can't use it based on my current position. Uh, although I, I guess I did make a choice over here in Orleans to create that decision space. All right, double fours. So if we have two hearts, I could copy one of those fours. And I think a four would be a little bit better here. Four is an arrowhead in Lost Ruins of Arnak. Um, yeah, so I can use I can use the four to move up here. And that gives me the star from the book. So I have my first star of the round. And I have another four to use. I could use it in Lost Cities. It's not a great number for that, but I do have a coin to use in Lost Cities instead if I want. In fact, last round, it might have been better for me to use a coin in Lost Cities cities and just say that I can't use the six and gain a resource from it. The event in Orleans is pretty bad, but I don't have two hearts to use right now, so I don't mind that so much. So let's use the four here. And the event is the other four, uh, which is minus two hearts, but I don't have two hearts to, to lose, so that isn't that bad. I don't know if that was intended, but kind of in Orleans invasion, you can you can or even in Court Orleans, when an event comes up and says you lose this stuff, if you don't have that stuff, you can't lose it. So that makes sense thematically. And yet we'll use a coin, a single coin, to make a one value die to use in this middle expedition. And just, I don't know, to get out of the way, let's use a pumpkin. Maybe I'll do this too soon to start this other expedition. All right, turn four. A pair of twos. A pair of twos. So twos are 
the kind of the parchment here, which I do need, um, and I need to spend a pumpkin. So let's use the two to move up this magnifying glass there. I'll gain a heart. I'm assuming these resources are one-time bonuses. Yeah, this is cross them off. So that's, it's, you use it when you get there. So I gain a heart. I also lose a pumpkin for advancing on La Lost Ruins of Arnak. And uh, I now have another two. The penalty over two over here on two is harsh, but that's okay because I don't have any coins to lose. So let's circle this guy. The two triggers over here for this event, so I don't have two coins to lose. And when I circle this guy, I can also circle a farmer. And let's circle. Let's circle this farmer over here to get a pumpkin. And I have nothing to do in Lost Cities, although a two would have been great in Lost Cities. I probably should have done that. That's okay. Let's go on to turn five. Another six and a three, similar to this turn, uh, turn two. So six and a three. I've already decided that uh, using sixes as the extra number is pretty good in Orleans. So why don't we use the three here to gain a pumpkin? And we'll use the six to gain two more pumpkins, because that's the event. Although I'm putting myself in, in the trap. Actually, yeah, I've fallen into the same trap over here again, where I can't use the six in Lost Ruins of Arnak. Yeah, that's a little tricky. So again, yeah, I can't use the six there. I should have remembered that. Um, and I don't have a coin to create a die. I guess I could manipulate the six into a five. That might be the way I need to go. But right now, really, my only option is to have a parchment and a parchment is a one two or a three so that's not going to work out i could turn this six into a four or a five though let's turn it into a four a lot of pumpkins to spend to get there but we'll do it you get you could probably start to see how ha giving players a few options in any given realm at any given time is really really helpful otherwise they're kind of forced to do stuff that they don't necessarily want to do. Um, okay, turn turn six. A five and a six. Five again is the arrowhead. I don't need the arrowhead until I get higher, so that's gonna be that's gonna be tough. Um, but maybe if I get a coin, I can use that for a parchment. So let's try to get a coin somewhere. Here's a coin that I can get using a five, maybe. Yeah, let's use a five here yeah we'll use a five here that gives me a star and a coin we'll use the coin as a one value coin to move up oh and i oh i should I, I did miss a coin here earlier i missed that coin so i actually do have another coin that i could have used before let's use the coin to advance oh now i do need that coin so i'll use the coin to advance the magnifying glass here which gains me a pumpkin and it gains me a star and it cost me a coin, so I did need that extra coin. And now we still have the six to use, which I'll use over here. I think this is called the merchant, maybe. And I'll look at the other number. This is actually a great event. The five is a great event. It gains me two coins, which is excellent. All right, I activated every realm that round that turn. That was great. All right, turn seven. A six and a two. A six and a two. So we're finally getting to the place where I can actually use a six over here, which is great. I might want to do that. Yeah, I probably do want to do that. Although a six could go really well here as well. So let me, let me plan for a second. So I could use a six there, could use a six there, could use a two here and trigger the six event again, which is also great. That's a little tempting. I can't use the six here. So let's use, yeah, let's use the two here. Gains me a coin. We'll go ahead and use the, oh, and it also triggers the six, uh, the six events. That's two pumpkins. We'll use the six over here, I think. I'm going to use the six here, gaining a star, because it is totally fine for me to use a one right there in that expedition. I can come back here later. These I can't do. I can't do anything with those. Those are dead. But these I can potentially get, or at least a couple of them. All right, turn eight. Another six and a two. That'll, that'll work out, I think. So we can actually use the six here if we want. We'll just go ahead and do that. 
and the two, I could use another parchment. Yeah, let's use uh, a parchment to advance the um, the book. We'll advance the book up here. I also need a coin, so it costs me a coin, and it gains me a star over there. That's using the two. I did the six there. Uh, I could create a one value die. I could even copy one of these dice to use over in Orleans if I wanted. I actually need a, I need some in this one column. So I've completed, uh, let's see, I've completed this column. So let's circle that. I've completed that one. I have completed this one. I haven't done anything here. I need a five right there. I need that five to finish off that box and two ones. So do I want to use that on a one? I could also copy the six to complete this box. That might be, although this will kind of hedge my bets a little bit if I use a one over here. And it'll give me another coin. And actually give me more pumpkins too. So let's use a one to create a one value die here, which gives me another coin. And I look at either die here, the two or the six. I'm going to use the six as the event because that's much better. It gives me two pumpkins. Now I have plenty of flexibility. Six pumpkins going into the last turn. I've maxed out on pumpkins. Low roll to end it, a one and a two. So I can get up, I can use a parchment up here at the top to, to move the book. It's expensive, but I can do it. Uh, yeah, I can do that, but it, it'll, it'll give me a star. Let's see if that's worth it. If I use, the, say, the one there. But I also like the one here. I almost like the one more there. So let's use the one here, because it finishes off that box. I actually don't really know. Yeah, this actually could be a bad call. Uh, let's come back to that. Let's let's uh, let's think about that for a second. Um, because I want to spend I want to spend this one first. How do I want to do this? Yeah, I that I may have to take that back. Um. Well, I guess I could just use so I'll I'll use the two over here in Lost Ruins of Arnak. It'll cost me a coin. Cost me a pumpkin. But it will get me up here, which gives me a star. Now I will use the one over here. I'm doing that because the event is to lose two coins. I don't have to lose anything now. Uh, and that gives me a star there too. So I have three complete boxes over here. And one of them is worth two stars. So that's four. And I have, I could copy the two over here in Lost Cities, but that doesn't get me any stars. So I will stop at two stars for Lost Cities. That's a total of six. Uh, yeah, 6, 11, 11 plus 8, 11.8 for the round. It's okay. An okay round. So let's talk about these a little bit. Like, I'm sure you can tell my impressions of them a little bit while playing. So I love, for all three, I like how they captured some core mechanism from the original game. Uh, I would say that I had maybe the most fun with Orleans because it was very flexible. I could always do something every turn. And I liked that I was looking at the die that I wasn't using for the better event. So not only was it advantageous to look at the current die to make sure I was completing these areas, but I was also looking at the other die um, and, and getting something, either getting something good or avoiding something bad, which actually worked really well. Lost Cities was neat too. I haven't seen a realm where you just like, independent of using a number. I'm going to put the camera up a little bit so you can see me. Uh, we, we're independent of the uh, of using a die. You are just kind of starting an expedition by paying a resource thematically. I think that kind of makes sense. And this definitely fits the mechanisms of Lost Cities. I would say the one slight issue with it is there is the potential just to end, to, just to stop one of these tracks. Like I just, I had to use that six somewhere. And because it was a little bit more maybe related to Arnak and being restricted there, um, but I just I had a hard stop there. And so in, in a round where you're maybe rolling a lot of high numbers, that could be a little tough. But uh, overall, it's pretty flexible. I think I, I think that worked pretty well. I think the, the tough one here was Lost Ruins of Arnak, uh, the original game of which I really love. And I think this is on the right track, but it's maybe just a little bit too restrictive right now in how you're using these numbers. Because if you do get some early sixes, you can't really do anything with them. And you, it's not like you can plan ahead for the next roll. You don't know what the next roll is going to be. So you could really be stuck. But I like the idea a lot. It's pretty busy. There's a lot of stuff going on. Um, but it's on the right track. And I think it could be honed into a really cool realm. 
overall, really well done. I, I love the creativity I see from fans who are creating promo realms for, for Rolling Realms. And I hope you had fun kind of playing along with me today. I'll post this on YouTube along with the link to get this, uh, this download if you want to play along with me uh, later today or in the future. All right, take care. Have a great day. Bye.